Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And uh, today we're going to be talking about Eric Carlson. I sent it out to the land, sent everybody out to the land the message to who would you like to see traded next? We just did a Ryan O'Reilly trade. Uh, video you might want to check that out that's that's creating quite the stir yeah i don't even know what stir it's creating quite the stir it's an old term so causing some conflict in the land uh so we're gonna okay i thought you know what what the heck you want to do carlson who am i to say who am i to say it's going to be difficult if Carlson moves. I'll tell you that right now. I get why everybody wants to see it, though. Eric Carlson in the, for the San Jose Sharks is having an amazing year. He's certainly on a high right now. I think he's got 22 points in 17 games. Best year he's had in a while. And San Jose, on the other hand, is not. San Jose also traded Burns away to Carolina over the over the summer, which doesn't really scream, we're trying to get better, does it? No. But we're going to look at two articles that may give us an indication of whether Eric Carlson will be moved. May not. They kind of say the exact opposite of each other. But either way, I think Mike Greer has got a difficult situation on his hands here with the Eric Carlson situation. And we'll see that in the article, as, and I'll talk about why I think it's difficult. We'll look at Eric Carlson, where he is. Of course, everybody knows about that outrageous contract. It's not really outrageous if he's playing like he is right now. We'll look at the possibility of the San Jose Sharks retaining money on his contract to move on. And some teams that he and the organization, and he would be interested, and maybe he might be interested in going to as well. Because remember, he's got a no-movement clause. We'll take a look at that as well. All right? So let's get at her. Here's the article. First article, it's, it's, a, it's a short blurb. There's been some rumblings, but I wanted to look at this one in particular. Okay. This is in Hockey Rumors or whatever. It's a pretty good publication. It's got some pretty good stuff in it. Having told that the San Jose Sharks are in sell mode, 32-year-old defenseman Eric Kevin McGran of the Toronto Star. He has been told. By who? I don't know. He's playing like his old self. He has five years left on an $11.5 million deal. And they're, of course, it's a Toronto star, so they're talking specifically about the Leafs here. And because they are, I am going to talk about the Leafs first, and we'll look at the possibility. How could the Maple Leafs even fit that in? Sharks could retain half, half, for the next five years at $5.6 million. I mean, we'll, I'll talk about whether that is something that they would do or could do or not. And a sweetener or two. If things go sideways for the Maple Leafs, it also talks about some guys that could be moved. Some of these guys could be moved in this deal. I don't think it's out of the question, to tell you the honest truth, that it's not that this could happen. I do think it's unlikely, but I don't think it's completely out of the question. So I will look at it, but Toronto will be my first team, which is by far my least likely team that he would go to. All right. so. I don't know who he was told this by. Uh, Merrick has talked about it as well. He usually doesn't just pull stuff right out of his butt. There has been talk about it. And one, there are things we know for sure. San Jose is definitely in sell mode. You don't sell Brent Burns if you're not in sell mode. Uh, they haven't had any talks with Meyer. So that doesn't look good. And But we have this problem here. Errol Carlson has said, 
Carlson was very clear that he won't be seeking a trade out of San Jose, explaining that he committed to the organization a long time ago. This had some preliminary talks with Career about the direction of the team, but isn't looking to abandon ship. Okay. Of course, while this no movement clause allows him to decide things like that, it's not necessarily up to Carlson because of his salary and all that kind of stuff like that. That alone may cause none of this to happen. That's true. His salary. But if San Jose and is really driven to do a rebuild here, it's not unheard of for them to retain half salary even for five years. Uh, Minnesota just bought out Suter and Parise and left themselves with like $12 million or something like that against the cap for a very long time because they thought it was the right thing to do. And if San Jose is going to rebuild, they don't need to be hitting the cap ceiling anyways. So it's really not unheard of for that to happen. However, with Carlson saying that he's not seeking to a trade or abandon ship, listen to those words. He's not looking to abandon ship. In other words, he's not going to be the motivator behind moving. But I have a feeling if Greer comes to him and says the right words, he may be able to be motivated to move on without feeling like he's abandoning ship. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, of course. He doesn't want to abandon his fans. Come on. This is good for his brand. It's not good for... It's not good for advertising. It's not good for anything. All right, let's look at Eric Carlson himself, and we'll look at the San Jose Sharks. I already brought it up. We already looked at 11.5 million. That is unbelievable for the next five years. To retain half would be 5.5, would leave you with a $5 million player for the next five years. Carlson is having an incredible year right now at... 22 points in 17 games. Now that's a small sample size and he hasn't did that for a long, long time. Since 2016, he hasn't hit a point a game. Right? Am I right there? Yeah, pretty much. So, I mean, it's reasonable to say that he's not going to be able to keep that up. However, most of this stuff was injury related and if those injuries are being taken care of, you never know. Could be a point to game player, but the fact of the matter is, at five million dollars a year, even if he is the 50, 50 to 60 point guy that we've known that he's come to be, still good value and still a great leader and still an amazing player. There probably would be some takers at five some million dollars, especially if they think that his injury stuff is over with. And got to remember playing for these San Jose Sharks the past little while, there wasn't much on this team to play with. You get him on a really, really good team, that could change. You could see his point production go way up. Now, what would the San Jose Sharks want in this deal? It's pretty simple. I'll make it quick. Uh, if they're really, truly rebuilding, and like I said, they trade Brent Burns, which tells me that they're not in buy mode, that's for sure. Uh, I would say that they would definitely be in sell mode. Um, probably going to be doing a Timu Meyer down the video down the road. So subscribe to the channel because you're going to want to see these. I got more too. Maybe a little Bo Horvat coming up. So subscribe to the channel. Enjoy the frolic while we trade people because it's fun to do. Um, you look at their system. William Eklund is probably their best seventh overall in 2021. Probably their best prospect right now. And he's had four points in 12 games in the AHL. Now, he's only 20 and that certainly doesn't make him a bust or anything like that, but it certainly doesn't make him ready to jump into a lineup anytime soon. Same as Thomas Bortolo. He's had four points, four goals, I believe. Yeah. In the AHL so far. Not looking like they're going to be ready anytime soon. And neither is really anybody else in their system. They're, they had two great picks with Philip Bystead and Cameron Lund. Both of them, Cameron Lund right now is like a point a game in college already, which is fantastic. And Bystead is at a half a point a game in the Swedish Elite League. These were two 
These look like two spectacular picks at 27 and 34 in 2022. A lot to look forward to, but nobody ready. So picks, prospects, this team, if they are rebuilding, has a long, 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 long way to go. All right. So we said we were going to talk about Toronto first. We're going to look at six teams that could be involved in a Carlson deal. Some of them may not have to retain half, you know, could retain less to get them and all kinds of stuff. First, we'll look at the one that was in the article. Kind of clickbaity, I have to admit, but uh, we'll look at it anyways because people are going to talk about it. Toronto. Now, at a le half, let's say they retain half for the next five years. Half of 11 and a half. Which would leave you out of both, what, five and a half, five and three quarters, something like that for the next five years. Toronto would definitely have to give up stuff right now. And, you know, somebody like Alexander Kerfoot, Rasmus Sandin. And do they have a first round? They have their first round pick in 2023. They do, probably. But I don't think they'd have to give that up. Because honestly, he's got a no movement clause. You got to remember, Eric Carlson's going to have to agree to anywhere he goes, so he does hold the cards, which kind of takes the leverage away a bit. I think that would probably do it. Maybe another. They'd have, it might even have to be another piece. They might have to take somebody like Wayne Simmons or or or, or somebody like that that they don't really want necessarily to make the money work. So that would be something. But the thing is, you still got Eric Carlson for the next five years at 5.75. And if we look at Toronto in the future, I mean, things aren't getting easier. Kerfoot could be gone. They would be, it would be gone in this deal. There's, there's guys that they could, Bunting's going to need a new deal. You're not letting Bunting go. And he's going to get way more than that. Um, you're not far away from giving Nylander a new deal. Matthews is going to need a new deal. And Carlson is 32 years old. Even at $5.5 million, he's going to be 37 by the end of the deal. And they're going to have to fill out the rest of the roster. I just find it very unlikely, very unlikely that, that, that this deal would happen. But I thought I would take a look at it since it was talked about in the article. Um, Carlson himself might not like mind the idea of going to Toronto. I don't know how much he is uh, for against going against rivals since he did play in Ottawa. But it is in the Ottawa area. His family might have friends there. I do believe, actually, his wife is from Ottawa. So it would bring them closer to home that way. I just find it unlikely. Toronto Maple Leafs fans, what do you think about that? Um, not to mention, it just feels like they've got they got Morgan Riley. It's not the kind of player that they need in Toronto. All right. Subscribe to my channel, Toronto Maple Leafs fans, and tell me what you think about that. Next, also unlikely, but I'm putting it in here because it is such a sexy pick. Vegas Golden Knights. This has got Vegas Golden Knights written all over it. Right? Cole, Carlson, the sexy dude, the fashion guy, the all bling and everything, and extremely nice human being to come in here and just jazz it all up in Vegas. And I know you're all screaming, cat space, cat space, we don't have cat space, blah, 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 blah. Okay. I realize that. Again, San Jose retains half for the next five years. I don't know if they're willing to do that. Honestly, at this point, I would if I were them. Because I don't think they need that cap space for the next five years. If they're going to really, 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 really do a rebuild. What do they need it for? And again, Carlson's going to have to agree to this. Would Carlson not want to go to Vegas? It's within their division. That's, that could be a bit of a problem. 
Who goes back? Well, they got to make the money work. So actually, San Jose can get some value here because, you know, probably Carlson doesn't have a lot of teams he's willing to go to. So if Vegas is willing to go here, it's not going to, you're not going to have to give up too many assets to get them, right? Uh, it's possible that, sh but uh, you, they are going to have to give up dollars. Simple as that. There's no doubt about it. Dollars are going to have to go back. I think, I would hate to do this, but I think Shea Theodore would have to be part of this deal. Now, if I'm Vegas, I don't want that. I want to build the most spectacular defense that there is. So, possibly like Riley Smith, who's making $5 million to make the money work right now. A draft pick and Jake LeCision or something like that. Now, what are you going to do after this year for Vegas if they do that deal? I don't know. Uh, Phil Kessel comes off a book. How they, you know, I don't know how they would make this cap work at all. I have no idea. I'll tell you the honest truth. And honestly, I don't care. If I'm if Vegas is doing this deal, all you care about is now. You get Carlson in this lineup right now, playing the way he is right now, and this team is a huge contender. Huge. I imagine they want a first round pick back, possibly 2024. But what leverage does San Jose have? They have no leverage. They have no leverage. The only leverage they have is the retaining half. They don't have to do it at all. So if they're not going to, if I'm, if I'm Greer, I'm like, look, if I'm not getting a first and a prospect or something, something worth my while, I'm not doing this at all. I'm not going to touch it. I'll just keep them here. Screw you. That's the leverage he has. So I think it's pretty likely that you'd have to give up a first uh, Smith and something like that. And you're just all in. After the season's over, you got to look at moving other guys or whatever the case may be. You don't win a cup, it doesn't look good. I admit. I, I, I really have to admit it won't look good if you don't win the cup. But you could move guys or whatever. And Vegas is not unknown for rolling the dice. Excuse the pun. I know it's sad. I know it's sad. I should be spanked repeatedly for that. I should. Really. No, you, you should spank me. I would hate it if you did. Okay, Vegas Golden Knights fans, tell me what you think about that. Comment in the comment section. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I will talk to you there. And we will commence the spanking. Okay, Nashville Predators. Now, I'm not sure. People are going to say, why would Carlson want to go to Nashville? I don't know. Why not? Is Nashville that bad? Tell me, like, what's wrong with Nashville? Every time I bring it up, why would, why would Carlson want to go to Nashville? I hear it's a killer town, man. Killer city. Parties, music, and all of that stuff like that. I hear it's great. Why, why wouldn't he want to go to Nashville? Now, the question is, why would Nashville want Carlson? I'll tell you why. Buddy sells tickets, that's why. That's the reason why San Jose signed him up. He sells tickets, and he's exciting, and he's fun, and Nashville ain't rebuilding. Let's forget about it. I hear about it. Talk to Nashville fans all the time. We need to rebuild, and I wish we would rebuild, and all that stuff like that. Well, apparently, there's not enough of you out there because their team of experts believe that a rebuild would kill the franchise or something because they ain't doing it. You don't sign Philip Forsberg to... 8.5 for till the eternity if you're rebuilding. And this team is off to a rough start, no doubt about it. And I don't know if this trade, I'm not saying this trade's going to happen right away. But if they retain half, and you might not even have to retain half in this deal, you've got Eric Carlson to play with Roman freaking Josie? Put Fabro or Carrier, one of the two, as part of the deal. Retain half. 
First round pick 2024, 2023, 2024. I'm assuming here that Carlson only has like two or three teams he's willing to go to, and Nashville happens to be one of them. And like a prospect of some kind, Philip Tomasino would be great. That's a lot. That's a lot when you really, when, when San Jose's only leverage is, if I'm not getting a deal like this, I'm not doing it at all. And I think that's what they will do. I think they would need a first, a prospect, and they'd be willing to take a player to make the cap work like a Dante Fabro. And you've got sexy, sexy Carlson. I'll tell you, it would change the whole landscape of this team. and uh, It would be exciting to watch. It would bring, no doubt about it, all the sponsors in Nashville, the ones paying the bills, keeping the lights on, you know, those guys. Uh, they would be like, yeah, you do it, try, do it, do it, do it, do, 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 do it. Like they would be calling the owner up and saying, you tell this freaking general manager to get Eric Carlson here right now or we are out of here. Like you don't even want a whiff of this rumor to get out to the sponsors in Nashville. I'll tell you that right now because they will be falling all over themselves to make sure this happens. So. Would be interesting, that's for sure. Could be L.I. Tolvin in. Tell me what you think, Nashville Predators fans. Comment, subscribe to my channel and comment in the comment section and let me know. Vancouver Canucks. Oh, oh, I can hear the cries of the Vancouver Canucks fans in this idea of bringing Carlson. Let's see the reason why Eric Carlson could go to the Vancouver Canucks. They love, love, love Swedes. The Sedins are in the upper management now. And their, their manager is Swedish. Everything about them has been Swedish. They love Swe Elias Pedersen. Want to keep him happy? Maybe bring in one of the legends of Swedish hockey in Eric Carlson. Might help you out for the future... In 2024, you're going to have to sign him up. Again, we're retaining half here. Nils Hoglander would be happy with that. I don't know if that's that big of a deal. And then you got you know, Ekman, Larson, and uh, and Carlson can frolic in the land every day. Maybe he can help out Ekman Larson be a good uh, defenseman again. I don't know. But you retain half. You just got a pure high-octane offensive team here no doubt about it i mean let's face it it's not exactly what you need when you already got quinn hughes playing quinn hughes and carlson together would basically but be like playing five forwards demko would probably be knocking on the door right away you know and nobody would be answering the door demko would be like hey 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 hello i heard i heard everybody's like Shh. He would lose his mind because Carlson's not. Carlson's terrible defensively, and the whole team is terrible defensively, and that's really not helping him out. Now, what if you were able to get Tyler Myers over back, though? Get rid of that god off a contract. Already have, you know, you already have somebody that's terrible defensively in Tyler Myers who also can't put up offense at $6 million a year. So they retain half, they take Tyler Myers back. And then you got to give up. You got to give up like put coals in. Uh, you got to got to really like. Now you're trying. Now the Vancouver Canucks are trying to get rid of stuff because and, and all of a sudden, as long as Carlson's okay with going Vancouver, and I have a feeling he might. As long as he's okay with going going there, now San Jose's got some leverage here because Vancouver's trying to get Carlson now. And San Jose's like, well, maybe we don't want to give him to you. I don't know. I don't know. We're taking Tyler Myers off your hands, so what else? Like, how many favors do you want here? Right? We're giving you Carlson. We're taking Tyler Myers. What exactly more are you going to do? Why is Kuzmenko scratched? What the hell is going on with that? Anyways, okay, that's for another day. So, who else do you give? I think it's got to be Vasily Potkolzin in a first-round pick. 
and you, you know, you, but we already gave Tyler Myers. They, they nobody, ain't nobody want Tyler Myers. Nobody. Ain't nobody want Tyler Myers. Okay. They're doing you a favor so they can get a 2023 first and a really good prospect and throw silly pot calls. And if you're not willing to do that, all right, just stick with your Tyler Myers and no defense and go on with your day, I guess. Tell me what you think, Vancouver Canucks fans. Would you give that up for Carlson? Do you think I'm nuts? Probably won't, but that's okay. Let's talk about it. Subscribe to my channel and let me know. Florida Panthers. Oh, my. Okay, why the Florida Panthers? Well, I, do I think, like I said, with all of these, do I think it's wise necessarily that they do all these things? No. I'm just thinking these are most likely places that they may go. Florida Panthers, cap room is an issue. We're retaining half, remember, for five years. Maybe not. Maybe we're finally getting rid of Sergei Bobrovsky. Doesn't that make you feel good on your insides? To $10 million, 34-year-old goaltender, signed for three, four more years? San Jose doesn't care. They could give you a goaltender back. You can take Reimer back as a backup. But I guess what? You're not doing that straight across, my friends. Oh, no. No, no, no. If I'm the San Jose Sharks, I'm not like, oh, yeah, just give us Bobrovsky and we'll be good. <laughs> no. We don't want Bobrovsky. We don't care about Bobrovsky. Whatever. We're doing this so we can make a Carlson trade. Carlson doesn't mind going to Florida. They decided... It's okay for him to go hang out and be rich in Florida. Who, who wouldn't want to do that? I don't know, but some people don't, I suppose. I, if I had $10 million a year, maybe I think a little bit different. I don't know. But Bob Roski, and then you're going to have to just give up all your prospects in the land, I think. <laughs> for them to give you a favor like this, where you get an intense offensive player like Carlson, and they take back a poor at less than average goaltender making $10 million a year, you better bet your bottom dollar or whatever, your top dollar, your daughter, children, and whatever else you have, that they're going to want prospects for days. Did Eric Gregory Devisenko ever do anything? Is he finally? No, still, still hasn't did nothing. That guy, it doesn't look like he's going to make her. So San Jose is not going to want him. I know you don't have any draft picks. I don't know who's going to be. Uh, hip, hip, heponimi. Really, it's the, the well is getting pretty dry, isn't it? No doubt about it. It may not work. It may not work. This was a good idea when I first started this. Tell me what you say, think. So, you remember, you're going to get rid of Bobrovsky. You're going to get rid of Bobrovsky. I'd almost want Lundell back, but I, I even, I don't, I think they would keep Bobrovsky and not give up Lundell. I mean, it's too hard to give up. There's no way I could do it. I just love the guy too much. I couldn't do it. Maybe Lusterinen. Lusterinen and Peppinimi. And yes, you don't have any prospects left after this. You have none. Michael Benning, you have no more prospects left. But you have Carlson, and you don't have Bob Roski. Tell me what you think, Florida Panthers fans. Maybe you can come up with another way. But, I mean, just for the idea of getting Bob Roski off my hands, Carlson's having a stellar year and probably has four or five year, pretty good years left. You know, almost anything I would consider, to tell you the honest truth, to get rid of that Bob Roski contract. And finally, you knew it was coming. You knew it. Going back to Ottawa. Now, this is one place where I think he would do in a heartbeat. I don't know if there's any ill feelings with Ottawa. Maybe there is. 
if that's the case, this is off the table because he's got a no movement clause, but he gets to go home. Can you go back home? Can you do that? They certainly need defensemen. They just lost Shabbat. Now, that doesn't mean this is happening right away. They get Shabbat back in the lineup. you got Shabbat, Carlson at half retained. Wouldn't that be cool? They traded him for a package, I think, that was like Pinto came back. Didn't they get Stutzel out of the deal? They did Brandstrom or something like that. They just crushed the deal. And then you trade back for him at half his salary. Now you're going to have to give something back. No doubt about it. Like, it's not just going to be like, we'll take Carlson and they just say, okay, good. Yay. Send Carlson back. It's, it's such a feel-good story that we won't even take anything back. Now. It's going to have to take somebody. You're going to have to send something back. Who is that going to be? I think you would have to give like Eric Brandstrom, a guy like Shane Pinto, your first in 2024, maybe Artem Zub. Not all of these, but some of these. Artem Zub for sure. Artem Zub, your first in 2024, and, uh, you know, a decent prospect. Maybe, you know, Lassie Thompson. It, this is difficult because, again, San Jose doesn't have much leverage in this deal. He's got a full no movement clause. If he says, I only want to go back to Ottawa, then their only leverage is if we don't get a re decent return, we're not sending them and they're stuck with them at $11 million a year forever. And that's probably what I would do if I was career like. I want this, this, and this, and they're like, oh, we don't even have to do that. Well, you have no leverage. Well, here's my leverage. He ain't going anywhere then. That's what I want. Call me if you want to give that up. If you don't, I'll stick with Carlson, and we'll just make the best of it here. So that's what I would do. And so that's why I think it would take Lassie Thompson, a 2024 first, you know, something like that. Uh... Uh, you probably wouldn't give up Shane Pinto. There's just no way. No way. Not in that deal. It would be prospects. Eric Branstrom. Oh, sorry. Artem Zub. Fix their defense. Lassie Thompson and a first in 2024. There you go. Tell me what you think about that, Ottawa Senate fans. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Let me know. What you think, and I'll talk to you about it. I will, because that's why I do these videos. I enjoy talking to you. Look at the weird thing I got going in the background. Everybody asks me, why do you not have a background where you got all the fancy things and it's hockey and stuff like that? Because I live in a shoebox, pretty much, and I'm lazy. I like talking about hockey. I, I don't like stuff like that. But uh, subscribe to my channel. And maybe I'll make a couple shillings and pony up some of that stuff back there. Have a great day. Okay. Bye.